Welcome to Small Bite Sound Bites, a midweek segment of Food for Thought podcast, where I, your host, Colleen Patrick Gaudreau, share short, succinct, thoughtful responses to typical questions, myths, and misconceptions related to plant-based eating, veganism, and animal protection. You can support this podcast today by going to joyfulvegan.com slash donate. This is a topic I talk about in my book, The Joyful Vegan, and it is about advocating for vegan items on restaurant menus or in restaurants or plant-based items in restaurants, whatever you want to call it. So take a listen and let me know what you think. This might sound controversial to you. This might sound counterintuitive to you. But in the end, what I want is for us to be the most effective and joyful ambassadors of compassion we can be and be the most effective advocates we can be. So if you are looking to do restaurant advocacy, and it's something that I think is really lacking, I think it is really powerful, I think it has a huge impact, and I don't think it's done enough. So here is what we know. Research reveals that how items are marketed to customers makes all the difference in terms of how well they sell or not. Now, one of the things I have heard from restaurants they will say, I had these items, I had vegan items on my menu, but they never sold. And so I took them off because I couldn't just keep buying the ingredients and not have them sell, right? My opinion is that the restaurants had great intentions, but they didn't go about it the right way. So here is what we know based on data, based on research, is number one, we should not want a separate vegan menu. Restaurants should not create a separate vegan menu. Rather, what should be done is the vegan items, the plant-based items, should be incorporated within the non-vegan items of a regular menu. That doesn't mean you can't notate which ones are vegan or gluten-free or soy-free, whatever, right? You do that anyway. You can still have a key that has a little V or something to indicate vegan and then at the bottom of the menu say what V means because vegans are going to advocate for themselves and they're going to look for those vegan items and so will non-vegans as long as they're incorporated within the main menu. If there is a separate vegan menu, vegans are basically advocating for a very private, exclusive little club because nobody else will ask for a separate vegan menu. You can have both. If if a restaurant wants to really highlight their vegan items and they want to placate vegans, sure, keep a separate vegan menu. It seems more work to me than than not. But honestly, what should be done is that the vegan items should be incorporated in with the regular menu. You can put a little V and you can indicate which items are vegan or which items can be made vegan. Number two, the name of the dish matters. So what a lot of restaurants will do is they will put something like vegan burger, veggie burger. And again, it is so unappetizing to non-vegans. They are not going to pick it because they think vegan food is just for vegans. If you want to know why, go read The Joyful Vegan, but that is the way it is. And so instead, label the menu items, call the menu items words related to taste and enjoyment and pleasure. So a customer is more likely to choose zesty chili and citrus roasted asparagus over asparagus and tangy ginger broccoli and smoky shiitake mushrooms over broccoli and mushrooms. Same thing with the burger. You can call it smoky grilled grain burger or Mexican bean chipotle burger. You can call it beyond burger or impossible burger if you're using the commercial burgers, but the worst thing we could do is want it to say vegan burger. It's the worst thing restaurants can do. You can also indicate in the description made with delectable plant-based ingredients for the discerning meat eater, right? So those are some things restaurants can do. As much as people profess, this is number three, to want to eat healthfully and will self-select and say they are healthy eaters, they are less inclined to order something if it's labeled healthy or low fat, or no oil, or low calorie, because we equate these descriptors with no flavor and no satisfaction. Instead, encourage restaurants to use descriptors like indulgent, 
decadent, sinful, rich, luxurious, those kinds of things. The next thing, number four, the restaurant can do is increase the artistry of the dishes presentation. Studies show that how food is plated actually enhances the flavor we eat with our eyes before we even put that food in our mouths. And so not only will that enhance the flavor, it will increase the sales of that menu item. Number five, aside from vegan burgers and nuggets, don't rely too heavily on seitan or tofu. This is for restaurants. This is something to advocate to to restaurants. They tend to have negative associations for non-vegans. And then finally, as I said, if you're adding a commercial product, call it that product. I think Impossible and Beyond might have that as a requirement for selling their items on restaurant menus, but also let them know that you're using their product because that company, Impossible Burger or Beyond Burger, will include your restaurant on the product finder page on their website. So the idea is to make sure that non-vegans, not just vegans, are ordering these items because I know vegans like to believe that they can go to enough restaurants and buy enough of these products to support them, but it's just the numbers don't play out that way. Just there, statistically speaking, there are not enough vegans to be able to support restaurants, you know, just catering to vegans. So we want non vegans to order these things. Now, once the vegan items, plant based items, are on the menu and being marketed in a positive way, restaurants can further increase orders of their vegetarian or vegan options by using an effective little psychological trick. Social psychologists have known this for a long time that when something is already being done by the majority of people, The rest of us think it must be a good thing, so we want to do it too. So you can change a person's behavior by highlighting that other people changed their behavior, right? This is social peer pressure for good. For instance, restaurants should advertise their new plant-based additions by saying something like, more and more customers are trying our new burger, right? Or more and more people are trying our new plant-based burger, what have you. So immediately someone goes, oh, other people are doing that. I want to do that as well. Same thing in terms of how they train their staff. They can train their staff to say, you know, today's special is the Impossible Burger and it's everyone's favorite or something like that. Or today's, you know, Chipotle Burger, plant-based option, is the special of the day and it's really popular. Everyone's ordering it. So those are some things you can do to increase the sales of those plant-based items. A recent experiment led by a PhD student in psychology at Stanford University, found that if a customer is told that other people are increasingly choosing the menu's meatless options, they're more likely to order a meatless meal. And I think that's pretty awesome. So you can say things like, or encourage the restaurants to say things like, our meatless burgers are on the rise, or we've noticed customers are starting to choose more meatless dishes. And so people hear that and they go, okay, I want some of that as well. I personally don't want to live in a small vegan club. I don't. I want people who don't identify as vegan to eat plants and to order plant-based items on restaurant menus and to not eat animals. And the more we make it seem like eating vegan is exclusive to vegans, i.e. having our own menu, we're sabotaging the very thing we care about. Would love to know your thoughts about this. You can find me at joyfulvegan.com.